Hi, good afternoon and welcome to MF Corner. I'm Sumera Abdi and for now the market uh, where well, it's been a tough and volatile day of trade and we're seeing that volatility play out once again because from the top again we have lost a bit uh, just holding with gains of about a half or percent right now and the mid cap index now seeing a cut of about 80, 90 odd points likewise for the Nifty Bank. But let's talk about mutual funds and joining in now we have Firoz Aziz of Anandrati Financial Services who joins in to answer all your mutual fund queries. Hi Firoz, uh, good afternoon and uh, you know I mean sorry we couldn't have you in our studio today but this is social distancing at its best right. Uh, the first query that we have uh, this afternoon comes in from Chandrasekhar Shinde, who's written to us uh, from Mumbai. So uh, he says that he has investments in multiple funds. He wants to create both a short-term and a long-term basis portfolio. So you've gone through his portfolio in detail as well, Firoz. Uh, what would the advice be? Uh, I've seen his portfolio. He has about nine odd funds. Uh, point one, I think uh, the initial reaction of his portfolio is but natural that he has got four schemes uh, from Access uh, and and two uh, equity linked savings schemes. So it's actually not very wise, in my opinion, to have four schemes from one asset management company. Having two schemes at best from one asset management company would be a better strategy. Of course, Access has done very well over the last couple of years, so this strategy would have worked for him to actually concentrate the money to Access, but that's not a perpetual uh, strategy. Uh, uh, you've gone right, doesn't mean that it will always be that way, so diversify across AMZs. Point one, uh, ELSS, quite a few times when we start systematic investment plans, we again keep them perpetual. But there is certain stage in life when your involuntary contributions to Section 80C uh, are already using up the one and a half lakh limit. So reevaluate whether you want, you need ELSS from a tax saving perspective, especially with the new direct uh, cleaner tax mechanism of computation. Uh, you may want to relook re -look at having two uh, different ELSS schemes. Okay, and you know what, uh, Firoz, I liked about Mr. Shinde's portfolio is that, uh, you know, he has defined short term as, uh, what, 10 to 12 years and long term as 20 to 30 years. It's not very often that we see uh, investors who've got at least, you know, this part of uh, their planning right. Okay, the next query comes in from Nikhil Mangure. Uh, he's written to us from Mumbai. So Nikhil is only 30 and he has been making investments in the Kotak Standard Multicap Fund, the HDFC Small Cap Fund, Canada Rebecco Emerging Equities Fund and the Aditya Birla Sun Life Tax Relief 96. Now in all of these four funds, uh, you know, Firozi has chosen the direct uh, option as well as the growth. Now he wants to know if, uh, you know, for long-term wealth creation for his retirement, so I'm guessing that will be, what, 20 years old, um, are these good choices? I mean, you know, for one, uh, the positive is that, you know, he doesn't have a cumbersome portfolio. He has a focused portfolio, but is it working for him? Uh, I, I think, uh, so like you rightly pointed out, there might be 20 more years uh, to retirement. Uh, and if he's collecting money, uh, I think out of the four schemes, uh, two schemes can definitely be held for long term, which is Kotak Sand Multicap and the Canada Beco Emerging Equities. Uh, HTFC Small Cap would be a smell, sell, sell in my recommendation, uh, surely because of the size of the fund, not that the fund manager's capability is uh, any lower. Uh, but in a small cap fund, especially in times like these where liquidity can be a challenge in the smaller stocks, uh, having smaller stock itself might not be a great idea. But sm a smaller stock, big fund might not be again a great idea. So uh, some uh, two of them hold, two of them changed to Mirai Asset Large Cap and LNT Mid Cap uh, could be good swaps uh, for uh, the ELSS scheme which he owns, which is 8,000 rupees a month. So he's almost putting a lakh rupee there uh, a year. So just revalidate your need of having an ELSS scheme. And if uh, it's not to the extent of 8,000, just scale it down and use the other two schemes, which I just mentioned, LNT Midcap, Invesco Growth Opportunities, and the third, third scheme also can be considered Mirai Asset Large Cap Fund. Okay, so he had also said that he wants to start a new SIP of 5,000 rupees in a large cap fund. So he chooses one of these, right? Correct. Mirai Asset Large Cap Fund uh, is, is one thing which he can definitely add. And I think there's a need for his portfolio to have a large cap fund because he doesn't have one uh, specific large cap fund currently. 
He has a multi cap, he has a small cap, he has a mid cap. Uh, yeah. So he's identified the need of his portfolio correctly. Nikhil, you have done that if you're hearing us. Uh, it's very important to actually have the core of the portfolio, which is large cap, especially during volatile times where we're seeing volatilities almost to 2008 levels and more, in fact. Uh, I think uh, having large cap would bring in some stability to your portfolio, Nikhil. Okay, uh, Nikhil, I hope that advice works for you. Up next, Mr. Radha Krishnan Velum Murugan has written to us from Muscat. And uh, he doesn't have a portfolio based query, but he wants to know that in terms of returns, do multi cap funds tend to work better than their large cap peers? You know, uh, Firoz, and this is a question that uh, uh, you know investors have asked us before as well, because they say that a multi cap would, you know, have enough scope. Uh, for alpha from say mid or small caps which the large caps don't but given the SEBI regulations which cap uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, the market cap that you can have per sector like in a large cap you can have uh, you need to have a minimum of 65 percent in large caps the rest can be mid or small does it really make a difference whether you're in a multi-cap or a large cap uh, so but I think it's a valid observation that the large cap fund also has headroom for a mid cap and a small cap exposure, but not to the extent as much the multi cap funds would get. But the differential in the exposure. So, if you took all the multi cap funds and found out what is the average large cap exposure, we might just conclude that that is equal or marginally lower than what the large cap funds currently own. But a multi cap's positioning in the portfolio is as follows not a static. Uh, allocation, but sometimes, like especially over the last two years, we have seen a big seesaw of valuations between large cap, mid cap, and again back uh, to large cap. Uh, so, what I'm saying is a multi cap fund has the flexibility to tamper with these proportions uh, for sure. How much does the fund manager use this flexibility? Uh, uh, some of them have done a great job in terms of going completely underweight mid cap a year back, uh, which was was a good thing to do. Now they are building up their mid-cap portfolio. So if somebody can manage this allocation dynamically, then it has value. So it is very fund-specific, uh, fund manager-specific, whether he'll be able to use this agility which is provided uh, to the client benefit and in turn the alpha creation. All right, uh, makes sense. Uh, all right, sir, uh, Mr. Velum Murgan, I hope you were listening into that and that advice works for you. We're going to take a quick break on that note. Uh, we have lots more MF queries that are lined up on the other side, but also keep your eye on the market. Uh, I guess as we go into the last hour of trade, the volatility is only going to get higher. The Nifty Bank, by the way, now down a percent. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. BSE Star MF Smart IFA के लिए Smart Platform 